Hey everyone, welcome to assignment 18. Uh, we're just going to practice what we've learned. Uh, I would uh, like to do a little more going forwards, and I would also like to practice going backwards. Uh, this time when we go backwards, though, instead of just finding A and B, like we did in the last video, we're going to look for A, B, C, and D. Okay? All right. So, where are we starting? How about this? How about for bell work? You graph for me um, y equals 4 cosine pi x minus pi plus 1. Mm -hmm. Give it a try. Nice. Mm -hmm. So, I like that you remembered you were supposed to set the argument equal to 0 and 2 pi. And of course, if we were doing a second period, we'd not just want 0 and 2 pi, but we'd also want 4 pi. Um, this is going to be pi x equals pi, or x equals 1. And here we're going to have pi x equals 3 pi, or x equals 3. So my graph starts at 1, and then it's at 3, halfway is 2, halfway between 1 and 2 is 3 halves. Mm -hmm. Look, add the numerator, double the denominator. 1 plus 2 is 3, double this, there we go. And halfway in between 2 and 3, 5 halves. Nice. Next, draw in the shape for cosine positive cosine, so we start high, head low, and then back up again. Please do not do this. Please do not draw a parabola shape. I need concave down, concave up, concave down. Next, y equals 1. Label that sinusoidal axis. And finally, see how our amplitude is 4. So this y value is going to be 1 plus 1, oops, sorry, yeah, 1 plus 4, the amplitude, 1 plus 4 is 5. And here, I know y equals 1, I'm going to go down 4. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And then here at 3, I was at y equals 1, I went up 4, and so now I'm at 5. Okay, there's our graph. I hope many of you have the same graph. Let's do a little more with this bell work. How about y equals negative 2 sine 3x minus pi minus 4. Now I know this graph has been flipped upside down. I know it's been vertically stretched. I know it's been shifted down 4. And right pi, except I have to divide by 3 because... I'm squishing my graph horizontally. So, I thought. Did you really pause the video and go do it? Come on. If you're not, you really should. It's the only way you're going to get comfortable with this. Is not just watching me do it. You've got to do it too. So, we start with setting the argument. 3x minus pi equal to 0. And 3x minus pi equal to 2 pi. So we get x equals pi over 3, and this is going to be 3 pi divided by 3. x is pi. Now, I don't have a common denominator. I added pi. I divided by 3. The impulse was to cancel. Your life is going to be much easier if you leave these with common denominators. Okay? So we're starting with pi over 3. We're ending with 3 pi over 3. Halfway between 1 and 3 is 2 pi over 3. And now we want to find our quarter points. So I'm going to add the numerator, 3 pi over 6. And if you'd like to reduce that, by all means. Uh, I might reduce that. Yeah, no, I don't really want 1.5 over 3. I don't need that. 5 pi over 6. Good. Sine graph starts on the midline, but it's a negative sine graph. 
So instead of going up to that positive sign, we're going down to our low point, back up to the high point, and ending on the middle. Okay? This is y equals negative 4. And so all we have to do are label these points. We've got 5 pi over 6. This is negative 4 plus 2. Don't be distracted by that minus. That minus is just telling us to start down and then go up. The amplitude is this number. So minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2. And here we have minus 4 minus 2. 3 pi over 6 minus 4 minus 2 negative 6. Good. One more? Two more? Let's go. We can do this. How about y equals um, negative 4 cosine 2x minus pi over 4 plus 2. Okay, give that a graph. Hey, um, welcome back. So, set that argument equal to 0. And set that argument equal to 2 pi. So I'm going to get 2x equals pi over 4. And I have to divide by 2. And then you do the flip and multiply. And you end up with... Yeah, it's going to be that pi over 2. Here, I've got 8 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4 is 9 pi over 4. And I want to divide everything by 2. It's 9 pi over 8. Gosh, I wish this were pi over 8s. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, so I end up with 4 pi over 8. Pi over 4. No, that shouldn't be that. I've got a mistake here. Let's check it out. We've got this. Divide by 2. I'm going to get over 8. Oh yes, that feels much better. So my graph starts at pi over 8 and ends at pi over 8. Oh, so why was it that I had that little intuition burst there that said that last answer didn't seem right? The period for cosine is normally 2 pi. I have to divide those x things by this number, by 2. So 2 pi divided by 2 is pi. So the distance from here to here should be pi. 9 pi over 8 minus 1 pi over 8 is 8 pi over 8, and that's pi. But that other answer that I had, yeah, no, that wasn't working for a distance of pi. Um, so it is good to check in with your work and to make sure you know to not make any small mistakes. Okay, halfway, 5 pi over 8, quarter point, uh, that's going to be 6 pi over 16, or 3 pi over 8. And here we have 7 pi over 8. Excellent. It's a negative cosine, so we're starting low, going high, and then back to the um, Our sinusoidal axis is 2, and our amplitude is 4. So 2 minus 4 negative 2. And 2 plus 4 is 6. And then here at 9 pi over 8, 2 minus 4, negative 2. There you go. You know, I hope this is starting to feel quicker for you. Um, I hope it's not just suffer, suffer, suffer. Okay, how about this one? Um, y equals 3 sine uh, 1 fourth x plus pi over 3 plus 2. Yeah, give it a graph. Mm -hmm. So we've got x over 4 plus pi over 3 equals 0. 
and x over 4 plus pi over 3 equals 2 pi. Yeah, notice what I did. I didn't write it as this coefficient times x. I wrote it as a quotient with the x on top and the 4 on the bottom. Why? Because students who see this are more likely to think I should multiply both sides by 4, and students who see this want to divide both sides by 1 4. And I really don't want to go to that complex fraction place. I mean, you should be able to get to the correct answer by that. Um, but a lot of students don't. And so I'm showing that. Okay, I get x over 4 equals negative pi over 3. When I multiply both sides by 4, you see that x is 4 pi over 3, negative 4 pi over 3. This is where our 1 period starts. 6 pi over 3 minus 1 pi over 3 is 5 pi over 3. And I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. So x equals 20 pi over 3. Well, that's... So what is the distance here? It's going to be 20 pi over 3 minus 4 pi over 3, which is 20 4 pi over 3, or 8 pi. 8 pi, and I thought the period for sine was 2 pi. Yeah, but look, see this? This is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 4. 2 pi times 4, ta-da, 8 pi. So, yeah, these numbers are good. Um, so here's my starting and my ending point for one period. So we've got our line. Here's negative 4 pi over 3. Here's 20 pi over 3. Halfway. Remember, I'm adding these. Uh -huh. Adding and dividing by 2. So 16. Add 16 pi over 6 or 8 pi over 3. From negative 4 to 8 is 12. From 8 to 20 is 12. So this is good. And then halfway in between again, well, 28 over 6 is going to be 14 pi over 3. And if I add these, I'll get 4 pi over 3, double the denominator, 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. Goes up by 6, goes up by 6, goes up by 6, goes up by 6. Yeah, I like that. This is a positive sine graph. So we start on the midline and go up, and come back down to the bottom, and back up again. I mean, back to the midline again. Don't forget to label y equals 2, the sinusoidal axis. And now we're going to use our amplitude to help us find the y value here and the y value here. 14 pi over 3, comma, what? Well, this is y equals 2, but I'm going to go down 3. And here at 2 pi over 3, I was at y equals 2, and then I went up 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. And there we go. Okay? Good. Let's do some more complicated going backwards problems. Oh, by the way, I want to change things just a little bit. Um, and by a little bit, I mean, I think that um, we really need to consider uh, a different approach going backwards. So if I have y equals a sine bx minus c plus d, this was the form we used for graphing. Okay, one set of parentheses. It works pretty well. I just set this equal to 0 and 2 pi, where the period normally starts and ends, to get the new transform starting and ending points. Well, when I'm given a graph and I want to write the equation, I'm not going to quite use this. I'm going to use this. Or it's a cosine graph. Yeah, double parentheses. Why? 
Well, it turns out that in this form, with the double parentheses, C is actually something we can just read right off the graph. C is our starting x value. But yeah, that's not true here. Because in this situation, we have to take into consideration what's been done to the period. And in this situation, no, we don't. We can just read that value off the graph. And to find b, we're going to do 2 pi divided by period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's get some rules for finding these. And remember, when we go backwards, we're using double parentheses. It'll make our life much easier. All right. So here's my graph. So here we have pi over 12, 2. And here we have 13 pi over 12, 2. And here, 7 pi over 12, 3. Um, if you like, I'll give you these points, but I'm not sure we need them. Yes. And here, 4 pi over 12. Yes. Okay, so like we said yesterday, step one, or in the last video, step one was determine is this sine or cosine? And does it have positive or a minus in front. Well, this shape should, you know, be familiar to us. We should be able to tell just by looking at this graph that we're going to be working with a negative cosine. Now, with that in mind, uh, I agree, negative cosine starts low, goes high, and comes back down again. I would go with negative cosine. However, you could choose to start here. And that'll be a positive sign. Right? The sign starts on the middle and goes up. Mm -hmm. Or you could start here and say, oh, this is a positive cosine graph. Cosine starts at its high point, goes down, down to the bottom, and back up again. Uh -huh. Even though they didn't give us more of this graph, no, that could be positive cosine. If I start here, this is going to be negative sign. So we can use any of those, uh, but the one that most people see is this one. The one that starts low is negative cosine. Good. Now, I'd like to modify what we were doing in the last video by saying um, D is the average of a pi and low y values. So my high y value is 3, my low y value is 2. I want to average those, and I get 5 halves. That's my d value. d equals 5 halves. Now my a value is going to be high y minus d, or d minus low y value. So, high y value 3, 3 minus d. d is 5 halves. So, 3 minus 5 halves gives me an a value of 1 half. Or, 5 halves minus 2, 5 halves minus 4 halves is 1 half, is our a value. So, step 1, find d the average of high and low y values. Step two, figure out A. A is the average of the high and low y values. Is it? Sorry, I take that back. Um, yeah, no, that's what D is. Um, instead, I want high y minus D or D minus low y to get our A values. Okay, so now we know our D is 5 halves, and our A is 1 half. Cool. 
Now, what about B? What about uh, C? Okay. So for B, um, for B, we already know 2 pi over the period. And that's 2 pi over uh, ending x minus starting x. And when I say ending and starting, I mean the period starts here. Oh, I'm sorry, the period ends here and the period starts here. The period starts here and ends here. If my graph continued on and you saw another point over here, yeah, that's more than one period. So I'm not going to be using that point. That wouldn't be my ending point. Unless I started here and ended here. That's that one full cycle shape. Okay? So where the period ends, where the period starts. So in our graph, we're starting at pi over 12 and we're ending at 13 pi over 12. So that's going to be 12 pi over 12. And so I get Okay, so period is pi. Therefore, our B value is 2. And the last thing we need to find is C. Well, C is always our starting x. And here's my starting x. So C equals pi over 12. That's because we're going to use the double parentheses. Right? Remember, this is starting low, so we want negative cosine. Um, I've seen a lot of people who got all these values right, who knew it was a negative cosine at the start, but by the time they finished finding A, B, C, and D, they had forgotten about that minus. So we would like to see y equals negative 1 half cosine 2 parentheses x minus 1 over 2 plus... Okay, and yeah, you can distribute that to if you want, so that it says cosine two x minus pi plus five halves negative one. I'm not gonna do. Uh, and the reason is because I have a hard time figuring out what my c value is. Like pi, I don't have any pi's on the graph. I mean. I had pi stuff on the graph, like pi over 12, or 13 pi over 12, but pi? No, that wasn't one of my critical points. I didn't even see that anywhere there. Right. I don't want to use that. I want to say this, this thing. Well, I guess that would be pi over 6. That's what I have to say. Um, yeah. Use the double parenthesis when going backwards and read that c value as your starting x. Okay? All right, so here's one for you to do. See what you can make of this one. This is 2 thirds negative 5. This is 8 thirds negative 5. This is 14 thirds negative 5. This point here is 11 thirds negative 8. And here, 5 thirds negative Okay, let's write the equation for that. Well, hey everyone, are you back? Are you ready to talk about this? Is it exciting? Do you feel comfortable and confident? I hope so. If not, you should be asking more questions. That's what the group is for. That's one of Mr. Paz's things. He loves answering questions, but you've got to ask them. So, D. D is the average in the high and low y values. Minus 2 plus minus 8 over 2 is negative 5. Is negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. A equals high y minus D, or D minus low y. Okay, so our D value, high Y minus D, minus 2 minus minus 5, is minus 2 plus 5, or 3. So high Y minus D 
is a equals three. But look, we can also do d minus our low y minus and minus eight minus plus eight. So we get three again. A equals three. D equals negative five. Now I can see my c value. C equals two thirds. C is always going to be our starting x when we use double parentheses. And then the last thing I need to find is b, which is 2 pi over the period. The period ends at 14 thirds and starts at 12 thirds. So 14 thirds minus, sorry, 2 thirds. 2 thirds, that's going to be 12 thirds. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And on top, we have our 2 pi. I guess we can reduce that to pi over 2. So now I've got a b value. I've got a c value. No, no, no. I've got a c value over here. Uh -huh. it's, it's inside the function, so it has to be an x value, a y value. Uh, we've got d, and we've got a. So let's write our equation. y equals positive sine, mm -hmm. uh, 3 sine, our b value is pi over 2, uh, x minus 2 thirds, plus our d value of negative 5. Um, yeah, I probably would write y equals 3 sine pi over 2, x minus 2 thirds, uh, minus 5. And again, if you want to be the person who distributes, sure, be the person who distributes. But if you distribute wrong, yeah, I got to mark the whole problem wrong. And nobody wants that. So I'd leave it in this form. Uh, yeah, I would. Okay, one or two more of these. Let's get you a little more comfortable with them. How about? Okay, write me the equation for this trick here. Mm -hmm. Flies when you're having fun. Okay, what'd you get for D? So the average of the high and low Y values. I've got 14 thirds over 2, which is 14 sixths or 7 thirds. And it makes sense that the number that's between 8 thirds and 6 thirds is 7 thirds. Our A value is going to be 8 thirds minus 7 thirds. Or we could do it as 7 thirds minus 6 thirds. D minus the low y value. I get one third either way. Okay. What else do we need? Well, I see my c value. That's my c value. And the only thing I need now is b. We know that b equals 2 pi over the period. Our period goes from negative 1 half to 7 halves. So, 7 halves minus and minus 1 half is 8 halves or 4. So our period is 4. 2 pi over 4 reduces to pi over 2. So now we have enough information to write the equation. y equals 1 third sine, remember double parentheses when you go backwards, 
i over 2, x minus and minus 1 here, plus our d value of 7 thirds. Now, why does this get marked wrong in the quiz or test? Not because of this, though yeah, I would probably recommend that up. And certainly not because there's no distributed. No, that's good. What's wrong here is the shape. Is that really positive sign? No, positive sign starts in the middle and goes up. So this gets marked wrong because student didn't put negative. All right. Definitely feeling like one or two more would be good for you. So, how about this one? Um, here we have 13 pi over 12. Here we have pi over 12. And this one is called second pi over 12 and negative 8. And this one is pi over 12 and negative 2. And this is also negative 2. So will you write the equation for that graph, please? Hey, Sadiko. Let me know if you have any questions. Or um, ask Mr. Paz if you have questions. But I'd like you really comfortable with this stuff. So, D is the average of the high and low y values. Minus 2 plus minus 8 divided by 2. It's minus 10 over 2, or d equals negative 5. Good. Now what about a? Well, a is minus 2 minus minus 5, or a is minus 5 minus minus 8, and in either of those cases I get that a equals 3. Good. Hey, here's our c value. I mean, I just can't tell you how much easier life is because we can read the C value off the graph because we're doing the double parenthesis thing. Okay, let's take a look uh, at this and see if we were to use only one parenthesis, what that would look like and how you would go about finding that C value. Okay, um, so we need that B, which is 2 pi over the period. Uh, the period here starts at pi over 12 and goes to 13 pi over 12. So I've got 2 pi over 13 pi over 12 minus pi over 12. So well, that's going to be 12 pi over 12, which is pi. So we have 2 pi over pi, which means our b value is 2. So then the equation, y equals 3 cosine 2 x minus pi over 12, close two parentheses, and don't forget your d value, minus 5. Okay, and yeah, this is positive cosine. Positive cosine starts high, goes lower and then high again. Good. Now, this is what we had. We read our c value off the graph because we had the double parentheses. If I were to distribute here, what would it look like? It would look like 3 cosine 2x minus 1 over 6 minus 5. Well, when I look at our graph, I don't see any pi over 6. So it's not obvious to me the way the double parentheses situation where I can just literally see that number as my starting x and I'm done. What am I supposed to do here? Well, um, yeah, how can I find that number? And in fact, there are a lot of teachers who teach you another method using a phrase called phase shift. But no, sorry, that's stupid. Just use the double parentheses. Don't need to learn more arcana just to help you with that, okay? Um, are you feeling good about this? Did you want another one? I give you one more. Um, how about this one? Um, uh, negative three fourths five here. Nine, oh, sorry. 
and 5 root 4, 9, and here, 21 pi over 4, 5. Okay, write the equation. Hello, hello, hello. Um, did you say this was negative cosine? Yeah, me too. So y equals negative cosine. Ooh, what's our a value? No, our a value is this distance. So let's find that d. d equals 9 plus 5 divided by 2, or 7. And it makes sense that the number that's halfway between 9 and 5, 7. Good. And so our a value pi y minus d, or d minus low y. Okay, so now I have an a value. My c value, there it is. And what about my b value? Well, that's the period. 21 pi over 4 minus a negative 3 pi over 4. Well, that's going to be 24 pi over 4, um, which is 6 pi. I think it's a 6 pi. Period is 6 pi. Yes. 24 pi over 4, 6 pi. So there's our period. This is just the period part. So in order to find B, I'm going to need to do B equals 2 pi over 6 pi. So B equals 2, 6, or 1 third. So what's my equation going to be here? Y equals negative 2 cosine. Uh, our B value is 1 third. X minus our starting X value. Uh, negative 3 pi over 12. No, 3 pi over 4. Close two parentheses, and then don't forget the d value of 7. Good. Um, by all means, um, write this as y equals negative 2 root cosine 1 third x plus 3 pi over 4. Um, but I wouldn't distribute that in 10. 1 third root x over 3 plus pi over 4. And, you know, I really do feel comfortable seeing this tree function in this form because I know how to graph from this form. I'm not comfortable graphing from this form. I'm really comfortable graphing from this form. But in this problem, they gave us the graph. I don't need to graph. I need to quickly be able to get the equation. And that is facilitated by using the double parentheses. Okay? All right. Well, that's our work for today. Um, I hope that this was a useful review. In the next video, we're going to start with uh, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant graphs. Okie doke. All right. Well, I'll see you in that video.